What's good? It's your man Ribsy and welcome to my dark room, aka my kitchen, my bathroom, you name it. As you already know, I don't have the fortune of having an amazing kind of self-contained dark room, but I still make it happen. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I make prints at home with some key tools and not too much hassle. This four part series is sponsored by Tetanol. Tetanol is a manufacturer of chemicals used for darkroom by professional labs, but also by home enthusiasts just like me. Their product line includes developing chemistry for black and white and color, darkroom chemistry, and even paper. Not to mention, Tenno also sells and distributes products from all of your favorite analog photography companies such as Kodak, Fuji, Ilford, and more. Use my affiliate link down below in order to shop for the darkroom chemistry you need to get started, but also for any other film photography things you might be interested in. All right, so there's a couple key specific things that I think you need to get started home darkroom printing. There's all kinds of stuff you could possibly buy in order to set up your own darkroom, but you don't need all of it. That's definitely what I'm gonna tell you right now. You only need specific things that are essential from my point of view. So let's get started. What's the first thing that you need? Well, obviously you need an enlarger. Right here, I've got a little mini enlarger that's actually a digital one, but of course there's also those classic analog enlargers that are much bigger and look more like what you're used to seeing. You need an enlarger to print. There's not really any way you can get around that. And of course you need lenses as well that go with the enlargers. For medium format, you typically have lenses in the 75 to 80 millimeter range. And for smaller formats like 35 millimeter, then you usually have like about a 50 millimeter lens. Any brand will do, but just make sure you find something that accommodates the size of negative that you want to print. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, the next thing that you need that is absolutely essential is actually your processing drum. Got one right here. Basically, the whole point of this thing right here is for you to put your paper in here in the dark, seal it, and then once you're ready to develop, you take this cap off, and that's where you pour your chemicals in and pour your chemicals out. Everything has to happen in pitch black darkness, which is why the processing drum exists. With color printing, you typically don't print in open trays the way you do for black and white. You could, but I think that would actually add a bit more complexity. So a drum like this was basically essential from my point of view. The next thing you need is actually this right here. It looks very simple, but this is a squeegee. The reason I think you need this is because this helps your prints dry quickly and nice and evenly. Literally, you use this and you wipe it across the surface of your print paper, and that gets rid of most of the excess water, leaving very, very minimal streaks and those streaks will evaporate nicely as well once your print is drying. So that's a squeegee. So the next thing you need is actually used to house your chemicals, and that's this right here. This is a bucket. Honestly, you don't need a bucket just like this one. It could be literally anything. In fact, if you use the cooler, for example, a food cooler, that's probably even better because it's insulated. But the moral of the story here is that this bucket is used to hold your water bath, which keeps your chemicals nice and warm. That's literally it. So anything that works like this would be good enough. A pot, a bucket, a cooler, any vessel that you've got would be just fine. So the next one is actually quite interesting. I've got right here an easel, and I honestly consider an easel to be essential. However, there's different types of easels you can get. So for example, this easel that I have right here is a fixed size. You can only fit eight by 10 sheets, and this is the exact crop you're gonna get every single time. That's useful because it's consistent and it's very easy, and these easels like this are typically very cheap. But then there's other easels as well that actually allow you to change the size, reconfigure the borders, and do all of that. Those are probably gonna cost you a bit more, especially if they're bigger. The last thing you can do with an easel is actually make one yourself. There's a couple really good YouTube videos you can look up. Um, I'll link a couple down below, but basically with cardboard or paper even, you could just make yourself a little frame and use that as your easel when printing. It'll work, but I don't think it's ideal. So of course, you're all probably wondering, how do you actually develop your prints? Well, you need chemicals. Right here, we've got the Tetanol RA4 kit. This kit is great for a couple of reasons. One, it's very easy to use. You have your developer and you've got your Blix right here. The other reason it's easy to use is because these are concentrates. So you basically just mix up whatever you need and want and then leave the concentrates stored for future use. Concentrates last a lot longer than mixed solutions. So I recommend you mix it in batches. Or if you're gonna do one massive run, then you can mix the entire batch up and just have five liters with this particular kit. They've got other kits as well that could be bigger. So Go take a look down in the affiliate link below in order to see what's available, but definitely this is a good way to start. And you'll get repeatable results with this as long as you heat up your chemicals to an appropriate temperature. So that's the chemicals. You obviously need paper as well because that's where your print's gonna go on. So right here, I've got a box of RA4 developing paper. And basically this paper is usually, they all work very much the same. It's sensitized paper, so there's an emulsion layer on it that's photosensitive. And when you expose it to light through an enlarger, that'll create your image. You then put that paper in the developing drum that I showed you earlier, you process it with your RA4 chemicals, you know, you do your developing round and you do your Blix round, and then after that, you've got a positive image. This paper is quite ubiquitous, you can find it fairly easily, um, but it all depends on size. This is eight by 10, which is gonna be the cheaper and most available size, but of course you can go up to 10 by 12, you can go 12 by 16, 
And if you buy full rolls, which are uncut, then you can cut whatever size you want. But yeah, there's a couple different brands, but um, there's not too many brands left nowadays, given that film has, you know, kind of shrunk just a little bit. The next essential item that you need is actually measuring cups. I've got a couple right here. And basically these cups, you know, you can get any measuring cup that you'd like, but I like measuring cups that are about one liter in size because that allows you to pour chemicals in and pour chemicals out. And you also need a funnel. A funnel will make it very easy for you to make less mess, but also be a bit more precise with how you pour your chemicals in and out. So just a couple, I've got two right here and then a funnel. And this is basically all I need to do my darkroom printing at home. All right, and the absolute last thing that you need is hanging clips like these. I think these are important because they allow you to hang your prints to dry very nice and easily. You can find a rail of some sort, maybe a laundry rack, anything that you use to hang stuff, even to hang your film if you develop at home. Use that same exact setup with these clips, and then you can just clip your paper through the corner and let it hang. Um, that's the best way to do it, I believe, because it allows maximum airflow around your prints, and it's just easy. So you can find these anywhere, and once you use them, you know, it's all pretty self-explanatory. All right, so those were essential items that I think you need in order to get printing at home and do it well. There's a bunch of other stuff though that I don't think you actually need, but could be beneficial, but again, non-essential. So let's go ahead and jump in. First and foremost, I think this is a non-essential item. This is a focus finder. And many might argue with me that this is essential here, but ultimately, if you don't have this, you can still make prints that are in focus. The caveat is, you know, some film has harsher grain, some film has almost no visible grain. Film with harsher grain is easier to focus because you could probably do that yourself with your eyes. Um, film with much kind of softer grain is gonna be a bit tougher. So that's the caveat. If you're shooting higher ISO film, you're probably gonna be able to focus it yourself. But if you're shooting lower ISO film, it's gonna be a bit tough. Either way, you can still do it. Is it gonna be a bit harder? Potentially, but again, non-essential. The next thing I wanna talk about is this. This is an air blower. Um, this is super useful because it helps you get air um, on your paper and get rid of dirt and you know dust and whatever else might be on the paper or even on the lens. Um, but I still think this is non-essential because you don't need a blower in order to do that. You can take a sheet of paper and use that to create some breeze. You can also blow on the paper yourself with your mouth. So there's other ways to get it done, but of course this is designed for that and that's why it would be nice to have. Another thing that I think is non-essential is this right here. These are actually rollers. And the whole point here is that you take your processing drum that I showed you earlier, you put it on top of here, and then you rotate. And that gives you very even, nice rotations. Um, and it's easy, you know, you just kind of put it on the table and rotate. I don't use this though. And the reason is that my space in my darkroom, typically in the bathroom, is very small. So finding a surface to lay this on top of is just not the most convenient thing. And I don't really have space for that. So when I rotate the drum, I actually do it myself like this, as you've probably seen in some of my videos, and as I'll demonstrate later as well. But I just grab it here and I rotate it like this with my own hands. And it gives me the exact same result. So this is not essential, but of course it's convenient. The next thing I wanna talk about is this. This is a thermometer. And we'll talk a lot more about this in the future parts of this series, but ultimately, I don't believe it's essential to measure the temperature of your chemicals. As long as they're warm, that's typically good enough. Um, of course, temperature can be helpful, especially to keep things very consistent from beginning to end. But again, it is not essential. You can make tons of prints without thermometers. And in fact, I never measure the temperature of my chemicals when I'm making the prints. So I can guarantee you that it's gonna work. And the last thing I wanna talk about pictured here are these color gel filters. These are actually filters made by Kodak from back in the day, and they're meant for you to look at your prints. It'll help you determine how much more of magenta or yellow or whatever to add or take away from your print. So this is extremely helpful, especially for beginners, in helping you assess what color your print has and how you can alter it. However, it is definitely not essential by any means. I still don't own these, and the reason I don't is because they're actually quite expensive if you go on eBay. You can only really get them used. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna learn the colors myself and train my eyes in order to see the colors well. And it's worked out just fine. As long as I look at my prints in daylight, I can then judge how much more magenta or how much more yellow or how much less of those two colors I wanna include in my print. So again, not essential, but can be very helpful for you beginners out there. So that's everything I wanna list off. There's one last thing that I think you should know about, but it's neither essential nor non-essential, it's just kind of a thing. And that is a storage box for your prints. RA4 paper is resilient, but ultimately, you know, the image could fade if you expose your prints to direct sunlight, for example. So I recommend you find a nice box or kind of an archival folder of some sort where you can put your prints and then you can keep them in there and they'll be good to go for a very, very long time. So everything that I mentioned there can most likely be bought used. And I actually recommend to you that you go on eBay, you go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, whatever you've got, and try to find these products all used because honestly, 
Do we need more new plastic things being made? No. So if you can find them used on the internet, I definitely recommend you buy them. And all these things are very resilient. You know, they were made to last, especially in largers and all of these plastic things that are available. So literally the majority of the stuff that I own has come from eBay or secondhand from some sort of listing locally. Obviously chemicals, you got to buy new because those expire, but ultimately everything else can be bought used. So I challenge you, if you're going to build a dark room to find as much as you can use because you'll be doing yourself a service, but you'll also probably save money. All right, so that's it for tools and equipment that you need in order to print at home. The next video, we're actually gonna talk about color chemistry and also the color wheel. So make sure to watch that one as well.